And uh, in his uh, PhD study, I found Ferguson has uh, outstanding ability in mathematics and also computer uh, programming. However, I also found that his weakness is that his, his writing was not so good. Also, of course, well, also he, he spoke English very well, but he was writing, you know, had some problem. But I think now he has greatly improved <laughs> his writing. And now he can he can write paper quite well. But at that time, you know, uh, he had some problem there. But uh, 20 years after, I think he had made a great progress. Okay. And after that, he did uh, uh, two more works. One is uh, about the thermal imaging of the volcano in the uh, in his uh, region. The other is that he continues the uh, modeling study. Okay. I think today uh, he will show some. Uh, Recent work is a new uh, work about uh, uh, the new software he developed. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I hope uh, to get uh, some new to see the, the, the new work from you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. So now I'm going to read out uh, a brief biodata of our today's speaker, Professor Wadal Wahid. Professor Wadal Wahid is serving as an associate professor at the Geohazard Research Center, King Abdulaziz University, Saudi Arabia. He completed his MSc in Geophysics and Seismology in 1998 from Cairo University, Egypt, and PhD in Geophysics and Seismology from Ehime University, Japan in 2007. Currently, he is working in an automated robotic system for geophysical survey. Professor Adel Wahid has developed several software codes for seismic data analysis and tomo tools for seismic tomography. His research interests include computer vision, data compression, scientific programming, seismic, seismic uh, seismology, seismolo seismic attenuation, seismic tomography, waveform analysis, etc. He has published more than 50 papers in journals of national and international report. Now, may I request Professor Abdul Wahid to take this digital forum and enlighten us with his lecture. Please, over to you, sir. Uh, actually, I would like to, to express my gratitude uh, to the organization of this uh, workshop for giving me the uh, opportunity to deliver this lecture talking about uh, my uh, recent uh, research. Uh, so my name is Muhammad Farouk Abdul Wahid uh, from Jihadar Research Center, King Abdul University, Saudi Arabia, and uh, from Meriag, Egypt. Uh, the title of my talk is S graph system for seismic waveform analysis and source parameters estimation, uh, review and case study. Uh, I'd like to, in this lecture, I'd like to, uh, to give some uh, hint about my software S graph uh, and use it uh, to solve some classical uh, seismological problem for seismic waveform analysis. Uh, uh, so one second, please. Could you please, uh, if possible, make it a full screen, your slide? Full screen, uh, please. Actually, it is, it is full screen, actually. It is not clear, not, not clear. No, it, it, is, it is clear, but if it is full screen, it will be very nice. If not possible, leave it as it is. It is a uh, full screen for me for in my screen. I don't know. No, no. I, I hope, it's I hope screen. OK, I think now it's fine. It's, it's fine okay. now. Oh, yeah, it's, now. Okay, it's, it's fine. Okay. OK, maybe the first slide is uh, smaller. OK, maybe. OK. OK, is this outline of this lecture? Uh, I talk about seismology with different aspects. Uh, so I usually people that noise me uh, uh, we notice that I always li uh, like to do something outside the box or something uh, different. So I like to, to share with you some idea about seismology in different aspects. Uh, after that, I talk about the history and review of uh, earthquake source parameters. Uh, and after that, uh, introduction to a uh, quick introduction to its graph and uh, tutorial, and we have uh, a case study to, to test our uh, our our result. So let's talk about seismology with different aspects. 
how can we imagine that uh, you can say that seismologist is a doctor of earth? It's not not only the researcher that uh, dig and uh, just give a stick sample from earth, but the earth is maybe alive and it can speak and feel and uh, being injured and has fever, tumor like this. Uh, doctor uh, uses the stethoscope, but seismologists use the seismometers. So uh, this is just uh, a small uh, imagination about this. Uh, we, we we know that the Earth uh, earthquake is the Earth's spoken language. This uh, my uh, estimation that this waveform that we are receiving is not like uh, kind of propagation in the Earth, but kind of some saying. Earth wants to say something to us, and we have to interpret and understand what it is saying. Yeah, the earthquake uh, is as the spoken language of Earth. So if we know uh, what the Earth wants to tell us, we can understand where is the pain uh, and how the pain is strong, uh, strong or moderate, uh, the type of the pain, uh, the, uh, how the, the pain has uh, influenced uh, during its pass from, from the stores to the receiver, and the, what kind of media where the pain of the matches traveled uh, through. So we can say that we have to understand well what the Earth wants to say to us. So if you if you if you can understand between uh, compare between different uh, uh, seismological branch, you can say that uh, the, the the branch that you are looking for the place is the earthquake location. The strength is the magnitude study and moment. The type of the pain is the focal mechanism and source parameter study. Uh, and uh, the, what happened to the message this is the uh, attribution study. Uh, uh, the media through which the message is traveled is some tomography, visible function, and velocity structure. Okay, some people, uh, yeah, the other, the other uh, branches like uh, how to protect ourselves from the earth. This is seismic hazard uh, method uh, studies. We always try to protect ourselves from earthquake. However, we are responsible for some of them. Okay, let's let's skip this. Uh, let's talk about uh, the the source parameter of earthquake in classical way. As we know that uh, the earthquake is generated from a kind of uh, impulsive response, uh, impulsive uh, signal that applied uh, to the two sides of the of the of the certain fault, and then uh, it generate uh, after that it, uh, it apply. Uh, apply to the two sides of the fault after in, in a certain time and as in a certain, certain duration. This produces a, a big uh, energy that propagates through Earth and resulting this uh, this seismometer. Sorry, this this uh, waveform. Okay. So the first one who who uh, who uh, suggest or who propose some uh, some theory is Aki 1968. He said that the dislocation occurred as a step function in time. The next is Haskell 1969. But in 1970, 71, James Boone is the first who proposed a model describing the near and far field displacement time function, spectra, and the effective stress drop for the first time in 1990, 1990, sorry, 1970, 1971. He proposed a model uh, describing this, uh, this the spectra of the, of this uh, uh, function that we are using all over 50 years, uh, and it, this is the, the 50 anniversary of this uh, discovery or this proposed model. So we are using the the model of Broome model until now. In the conclusion of this uh, of this paper or this result, he claimed or he uh, suggests that people can estimate the stress drop and source dimension from here uh, is this function and and soon after uh, a couple or a, a multi uh, papers uh, coming uh, describing the, the relation between the source dimension and the corner frequency and the subject moment and so on and this is the classical uh, equations and models that we are using up to now Actually, if we if we just uh, notice the the the, the Broome model equation, we, we we notice that 
the bro model behaves like a low pass filter with a cut off frequency decreases with magnitude increase. That means For example, the, the magnitude 8 earthquake has a has a, a frequency corner frequency much much less lesser than that of the one one uh, magnitude. That means that when the magnitude increase uh, decrease, the corner frequency increase. So this uh, is uh, is inversely proportional relation. So let's let's ask ourselves why in earthquake we form follow broom model spectral shape. So why 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 exactly this uh, this model or this uh, low pass filter uh, response? So if we if we take into consideration the the, the classical form of or the, the seismogram, we can say that it's composed of the signal and passive signal, composed with the instrumental uh, signal and also the uh, the geometrical or sorry the the propagation pass effect. This makes the seismogram. The, the, the signature of the source is uh, imprinted in the waveform uh, in all uh, its, its uh, 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 sorry, yeah. the, the signature of the source is, it, it can be found in all the portion of the, 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 the waveform. That's why uh, if, we, if we make, sorry, I want to do this pointer. Yes, for if, if you make a uh, uh, fast current transform of any 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 sig signal or any waveform, we can uh, find the, that is uh, this is then for follow the Brun model. So if, if we solve this shape of Brun model uh, for the corner frequency and the flat part, we can solve uh, the source parameter of any uh, earthquake. So it seems that the estimation of the source parameter depends on an accurate estimation of the best fit group room model parameter like like the, the corner frequency and the corner frequency here and the, uh, the flat part so to do this uh, we use the s graph uh, program okay as a, as a quick estimate as a quick description of s graph we can say that it is a graphical user interface program uh, it, is, it is a window application program for waveform analysis and source parameter estimation it is a uh, it is graphical user interface, easy to use, uh, support a wide range of, of data, and consists of a lot of advanced uh, analysis technique. This is the screenshot of the program. Uh, the, the, the speciality in the program is the wide range of data support, and it has mathematical inversion method to solve a seismological problem like boom model, focal mechanism, automatic diagram, attenuation, and such effect. Uh, it is on time presentation of inversion pro progress. We can, we can see the, the progress of the, fit, uh, the fitness of, uh, of data uh, on time. Uh, this is a, it has a quick estimation of earthquake magnitude and source parameter, uh, has a location and mapping tools, and a flexible plotting and record section facility, and many others. Uh, so uh, briefly, we can say that uh, this graph can support uh, the, the most uh, popular uh, waveform format that we are using. Here is the SAC, C, mini C, GSE, K2, the tech format, also EV2, and many other formats using in uh, the main the seismology or seismological center. This is another another uh, detail of the of the format. What, one of the one of the format that, that I have added uh, recently is uh, have a new idea about the the data in image format. It's a kind of uh, idea telling that I can uh, store the image, uh, the data into an, a bitmap image. The, bit, the data will be uh, stored in uh, the bitmap image in the form of encry encryption, about 128-bit uh, code, and it is uh, time and time one and time two uh, compressed. Format. Not only that, but it's also uh, it is in the uh, highly uh, compressed image format, like the WebP uh, format. Not not only that, but I I have inserted in the this is example of the data stored in a, in a bitmap image. 
can be produced in any in any uh, uh, photo editor program. But I, I inserted here at the top of the image such that uh, kind of color coding representing or telling the type of data storage in this, uh, in this, in this file and uh, uh, how is the how magnitude range, what is the depth of, of this, and also it is, if it is analyzed or not analyzed, not located or located, some, some information telling the user uh, about the, 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 the status of this data without, uh, without opening or without uh, editing the file. So instead of uh, having my data into binary file, I have it into, into image. So the next step, we can, we can store our data into album, not into data, binary data. Okay. After that, uh, we, can, we can put it into in paper, we can print it as paper. And in all microfilms, we have many ideas, we can, we can store a lot of information in just a few uh, space. This uh, method is implemented in this graph, the new version. The detail of this method can be found here in this uh, recent publication in the multimedia tool and application. About all the information, and anyone need more information about this, you can I can uh, tell you. Okay, this graph has different uh, uh, tools, uh, routine tools, speaking tools, location, inversion, and so on. Yeah, for for the for the routine tools, we have zooming, tapering, for for like this. It has a quick uh, quick. Uh, uh, description, the zooming, uh, fast forward transform, test signal, integration differentiation, response motor correction, uh, convolution to convolution, and so on. These many tools, mathematical tools, can be applied to any trace you have. Uh, next is the picking tool, where we have, we can stretch any trace and pick any any phase naming and store in uh, the program. We can add, modify, or delete any phase. This is also used for location. Next is magnitude. We can uh, we can uh, calculate the local magnitude or any uh, customized equation we can have in our area uh, using the uh, peak to peak amplitude peak from from uh, the trace. Mapping tool. We can after after we pick all the the, the phases we have, we can just by one click uh, locate our our earthquake. And you can select any cluster model and you can select any, any trace to use. And after that, we have the location map uh, showing the event and the station used in location. Also, you can have you can change the map, map properties, you can change the symbol, symbol color, and so on. After that, you can have a, a quick report of the earthquake location and magnitude and all our work in this graph can be written here. The SFS parameter and uh, everything. The, it's a graph plot. We have uh, the original plot, the time domain. We have uh, cross correlation, sorry, reconstruction. Reconstruction can can be plotted uh, in relation to the distance or uh, or azimuth or uh, time or anything, and also red overlay trace. Uh, one of the important tool in this graph is the inversion. The inversion uh, have linear and non-linear. In linear inversion, we use what is the diagram. This is, they, this is done by just simply plot a relation between the p time and the s minus p time, and the fitting, fitting of this curve gives the dp over ds and origin time of our event. This is for the linear or correct diagram. Other, uh, this is the, the result of this curve. The other, you can make a linear, linear inversion with travel time distance relation. For any phase you select, you can have a relation between the distance and the time for all the station you have. And the fitting of this curve gives the velocity of the apparent velocity of of this uh, of, of this uh, data. This is the main uh, value for the first arrival. This is the main uh, main concept of uh, uh, of how to calculate this uh, this value. If you use the v, if you, if you use the, the pg, you have the velocity of pg. If you use the vs, you can have the vs. Pn you have can have velocity of of pn and so on. Whatever phase you select, you can have it. And we can, we can try it now, we can see how to, to do this. Uh, next thing is a non-linear inversion. We have broom model inversion for displacement and velocity. This is the equation for, for displacement. 
uh, we have to, to select the trace, the, the trace that we want to make the inversion, and, uh, and we can have a best fit with the corresponding uh, brown model, giving the corner frequency and the flat part. This can be used directly to estimate the source parameter. This is the same thing for the uh, velocity, the blue model velocity inversion. If I have a velocity trace, I can apply that directly to, to find the pro model velocity. Uh, other is the attenuation relation. We can also use uh, the inversion technique to uh, to find the Q and F relationship with the attenuation uh, study. Okay. After that. We have now have studied how to how to calculate the, the, the corner frequency and the flat part of any trace. Now we can calculate just by by using this equation we can calculate the source uh, dimension or the source radius and the stress drop and seismic moment. Uh, the source uh, the source dimension is the inversely proportional to the corner frequency, and the seismic moment is proportional to the flat part. And this is the uh, direct box for, for estimating this uh, value. Once you have a best fit value of omega and corner frequency, and you have uh, the proper value of wave velocity and density and distance, you can have this output, which is uh, the subject moment, uh, uh, moment magnitude, fault radius, uh, energy, and stress drop. Uh, and also, uh, after that, you can save this information into a disk uh, that people can use it. You have uh, the, in this file, you can find this information. The, of the trace, and also you have you can find the observed and fitted uh, spectra of the uh, But uh, we have some challenges. Uh, that so the source parameter estimation is not such an easy because we have uh, the source time function is uh, is not simple like a triangular or, or trapezoid or even a square wave. It is just uh, it is uh, complicated. So uh, when we use the sample uh, sample form, it will not give the the the, 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 the proper estimation of the source. Uh, next is, for example, uh, not all stresses applied to the fault side are released. So the low frequency spectra or the flat part is not uniformly increased with the FC increasing. Okay, and that means that we know that uh, when there was a magnitude increase, the FC decreased. But if the stress would drop didn't uh, be uh, the same, the, this relation will not be uh, like that. We have different. That's why it is one of the challenges. Uh, the wave propagation broadens the pulse width with, uh, with distance. That's why you can find from every station, we can find different uh, different uh, uh, different pulse pulse width. Uh, there's a smaller is a small event less than 2.2 have uniform corner frequency. So that means that the, the earthquake smaller than this. Will not give a, be, a, a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger uh, color frequency. That's why, that's why it is. Uh, this one, one of the of the challenges in time. Uh, next, the, the color frequency of P is different from that of the S by about 1.3. This was also one of the challenges. So, uh, and the vary from large to small square. It's not a fixed uh, value. It is different from big to, to small uh, square. So this is the, this challenge that we want to 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 to, to face during our work uh, to estimate the source parameter. So uh, we have to be wise. You have to be. You have uh, some uh, knowledge about what you are doing in order to judge our result if it is okay or it's not okay. Not not take the result and use it and publish without uh, thinking how how from where it comes and if it is wrong why it is wrong. Okay. So uh, I use the S graph to just to uh, inspect some of uh, the idea about the broom model and the, the, the pulse width and what's the, what's the relation between the pulse width and the corner frequency. So I generate uh, about uh, 10 uh, signal, test signal from uh, triangle, tri triangle signal from uh, 0.1 second to 0.2 to, to 1 second, about 10, 10 set, set of 10 traces. Everyone has different uh, pulse uh, width, and try to do the uh, the Brown inversion and and find the, the corner frequency and source parameter and see what is happening. Is, is it really the, the, the pulse width is, is changing 
with the corner frequency, there are some relation inversely proportional or directly proportional or something like this, just to test uh, what you are going to do. And when you found a result from our da real data, you can uh, you can feel uh, the, 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 the result. Okay, so first I tried the, the impulse, the, the, the spike signal is the impulse signal that we, we it should be zero, uh, zero the duration, sorry, zero duration. Uh, so it is a flat response, all the frequency are given, but because it is the digital da data, so the, it's not a zero, because it is the one delta T, one, one simple interval. So this, we have this, uh, this cut of frequency, but uh, in general it is a flat response. So this is no, there is no corner frequency here. Okay, so starting from point 0.1 second, the point 0.1 second uh, period, we found the corner frequency about 3.47. Uh, the the, the right, that red color is the real uh, spectra of this pulse, and the, the, the green is the uh, best fit drone model, and this is uh, the best fit uh, value. So this is for the uh, point 0.1 second. The point 0.2 second give also uh, you can see that the the, the phone frequency become less and next the bigger period become less about 88 point 707 point 5, 0.8 point 5, 0.59 this point 0.6 second uh, the point 0.7 is point 0.51 point 0.8 is point 0.4 and so on so the the one second one second uh, duration of uh, of signal give 0.33 uh, corner frequency. Uh, this actually is very important because uh, the people who are using uh, the, the, the seismic uh, network uh, have to, to, to select uh, a proper uh, uh, sensor or the sizing system uh, to, to record such event because uh, the 0.33 is out from the normal uh, natural period of seismometer, which is one hertz or something. So the, they need to have at least the broadband seismometer to, to record event of this pulse width of one second. So you have to, to, to take care about uh, how to uh, to select your net network configuration when you are when you are using to make any survey. To, to catch this uh, this signal, you have to, to, to be patient, to, to be careful about uh, this uh, select the network that uh, corresponding to what they want to to record. So after that, I I, uh, I collect all the corner frequency given from the pulse width from 0.1 to 1, and I make relation between the corner frequency and pulse width. I found that this relation gives the the, the corner frequency equal to t to the minus one uh, multiplied by 0 0.36. This uh, direct equation, uh, log logarithmic equation. Uh, logarithmic relation between the corner frequency and pulse width. So this can be used uh, in uh, in our our uh, program. Uh, once you have a corner frequency, you can give the pulse width direct. But I, I just need more we need more tests about this to to, to try to do diff, different type of signal. Uh, you, can, uh, you can try trapezoid signal and uh, square wave square uh, square signal until we found the, the which it is the which it is uh, stable or it is different or something. So it's just it is uh, just a quick test uh, about how the, the the pulse width is different from the corner frequency. Uh, moreover, uh, here I try to to use the, the relation between the pulse width and the fault radius. Uh, I know that the fault radius is the, the inverse proportion to the corner frequency, not the pulse width. So I try to find the pulse width and calculate the fault radius and found this relation comes. Uh, telling that the, the pulse width equal point uh, 5.2 multiplied by the radius plus 0 0.068 uh, and also the, the, the velocity of uh, the bigger velocity has a bigger uh, radius and the bigger portal. Okay, uh, next, uh, uh, okay, after that we now we have to have checked that the, the impulsive signal or the passive response of, of the earthquake is responsible for this broom model shape. And when the pulse width increase, the broom, the corner frequency decrease. And we test it and we make sure that this uh, variation of corner frequency really uh, directly uh, related to the, the fault uh, size. Let's try a case study. Select uh, an event occurred in Egypt. Uh, 
about uh, about 2.9 magnitude and uh, this makes about 20 and we try to uh, to find the uh, to find the the, conduct, the 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 source parameter of this event and see how can we use the S graph to do it so now i i will move to the S graph Okay, this is a, this is the graph program main window. So the S graph uh, uh, is simply uh, depend on uh, the project and event system. That means in every in any project I have I have many events and every event has many traces. So here is the event is a, is a project of uh, corresponding to this event. I, I use it and I select event eleven. You can you can change event from here. We have many event in this. Uh, in this uh, project, this event that we want to test, this is a case study, and these are other other events that we don't uh, we not go through. But uh, let's try to how to how we can uh, access the different event in the project just in one click. So uh, first of all, we want to know what is the, where is this earthquake. This earthquake can use it. This is the map. This is the location map. This is the earthquake, and this is the station that we, we are using. So like like this. So if you want to uh, know the information of this uh, event, of this trace, you can go through here. So every trace has the length long and the distance as well as all the information here in this, uh, in this red box. You can go through any, uh, any trace to know what, where is the information about. Even the peaking is there, okay? Okay, uh, now uh, let's do, if, if you have already picked the P and the S wave, we can have a very quick what is the diagram plot by using uh, our uh, our uh, tools here so this is how to do the what is the diagram we ask you to select any uh, traces you want to uh, participate in this inversion so i can select all and then okay so by this way i use all the station i have all the picking p and s and plot the relation between the p and s minus p and got this curve and the value of VP over VS and the origin time. Actually, we use the word diagram here uh, many times in every picking uh, 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 session because uh, before going through the location, we have to, to make sure that our P and S are, uh, uh, are proper uh, 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 picked. Okay, it, if I have something wrong here, I can repick the, the station that we have uh, uh, scattered uh, around the line. So this green line is the best fit of the red diagram. Okay, I can repeat, I can remove any station and repeat again until I satisfied about the, the value of uh, the VB over VS or horizon time. Okay, uh, next time also I can have uh, the relation between the travel time distance curve. Here, I ask uh, to what, what station you want to, to use. I, for example, I want to use the only Z component here. Okay, if we apply, this all the Z component, and this is the P and PS. If I want to know the travel time distance curve of P wave, I just use P, PG and apply and return. Okay, this is what what can say the distance and the, the arrival time of the peak uh, station. And here is the, the velocity selected for the PG, the best fit velocity for PG of this station so if i want to for example uh, for s i can uh, select s this is the f s s phase sg and you find this, this is the result of the uh, best fit travel time of sg this is the uh, velocity of this phase and so if i have, if I have picked the pn i can use pn and, and so on this is just to make sure that my picking is correct before I proceed for the location or to the uh, sample tomography data or something like that. Okay, uh, next, which is the most important of this uh, lecture, is the source parameter. 
I, I want to do the, the Brun model. This I use the nonlinear uh, nonlinear uh, inversion of data. So here I have, for example, uh, displacement or velocity. This is important because people are asking me about this. I have this I have velocity. So this this data is velocity data and not 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 corrected. This is uh, the count. It's not not instrumentally corrected. So I have to to know what I am doing with. It. So this is the this is the velocity data. So I I want to make a good model for this. So when I select, if I want to do displacement, so I have to do integration for the for, for the trade. If I want to do if or I can use the velocity directly. So for example, if I want to do displacement, so now I know that I I using I using velocity data. For example, the, the first station is this. I use it. I have to know that. This is the velocity, so I want to be able to, to integrate the trace before I fit. Also, I have to do the response if I want a proper uh, sudden moment and uh, information. So, what is this value? Because also people ask me about this value. This is a zoom. I cannot I cannot use all the trace for, for fitting. I have to, to select a portion of the trace. So once I, I press zoom, I have to select, for example, this portion should be should not be small. To not, to not be too small, to have a, 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 a some number of point using in FFT. If, if it's small, the the the, the trace will vanish. You know, you are not for something noise to do. But if I have some, I have. But I have to select the the portion of. For example, if I, if I use S wave, I have to select S wave. If I use P wave, I have to no, not mix. So it should be one type of of, of wave, and also not not so big. Not, not because I don't know to uh, want to uh, to enter some propagation effects on the on the on the spectrum. So, for example, I I, I can try many times, but if I if I use this window and I, I integrate and I do response, uh, also this kind of filter. If I want to to, to have a, a filter uh, for the spectra to to have this fit, I can use. If not, I just one one mean no filter. The frequency to fit. Uh, people uh, Bordeaux ask me. What to do here? Minus one, minus one means for all the spectra I fit. Sometimes the spectral uh, curve has some uh, disturbance or some something up and down will will disturb the fitting. So I, I can cut from here. I can cut from it. But for now we can use all the three, all the all the, the spectra. Because I select the, the do the response. They ask me what is the response of this station. I know. As a FYM, it is a broadband STS2 station. So just I, I select this. So by, by this way, this is the response direct box. There is built in station here. I can use any one to, to just a big, very quick uh, response. If not, I can use a uh, whole zero file from here to enter and to use in our analysis. But here I have a built in uh, uh, response uh, data. Okay, STS2 for zero values. So, okay. Oh, now he, he what he have done. This is the, this trace is integrated and uh, respond correct. Now it is a this is a real ground uh, value. Okay, and this is the spectra of this. This is the window that I select. This is the spectra of this. What is this? This is the, the initial value parameter that I need to to use for a Brun model uh, parameter. The default can be done without any problem. Just press OK. It will, it will come. It will come. The, the default of Omega is the, this value, the first, the, the first, the first value in the in the curve, and the, the default of uh, color frequency is uh, one. It can change. Never mind. It, it will reach the value, the exact value, uh, according to the inverse. Uh, this is the slope. The slope is the slope of the fall off here. According to Brun model, it is two. Sometimes it needs to be two point five. But it should be fixed here. When, when I press here, it is fixed. You cannot do the, the three parameters together. There is the trade off between them. So if I fix it too, it will be fixed and you calculate, calculate both, both uh, values. So if I press OK, we give the best fit uh, value of, of uh, corner frequency and, and third part corresponding to the curve. OK. Uh, if I agree with this, I can uh, OK, I can accept. If no, I can repeat different window and different uh, filter and different. Uh, I can do whatever uh, until I found uh, the best value satisfied. Once I press OK, accept, 
to give you the uh, uh, the uh, resource parameter dialog box in which the value solved here this is omega and this is the corner frequency of that tree. Okay, uh, because I select the S wave part of the of the uh, of the of the trace, you see, I have to enter here the, the S wave velocity, density, and uh, distance. The distance is coming from the information of the, of this trace, uh, which is calculated from the from the location. Okay. Uh, okay. Of course, this value and this value are used in the sudden moment. Uh, sorry, sudden moment equation, because sudden has has need need density and distance. Okay. After that, this is the output of the result. This is the sudden moment. This is uh, this is the uh, uh, MW, both magnitude, force radius, and uh, energy, and thread drop. You can repeat many times until I found satisf satisfaction. Uh, also, we have another thing. This, this is very important for people to to have a proper value. They, if they use this value, they, they need to use the, 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 the horizontal component. We can use the east component and north component, everyone, and then make average uh, between them. Okay, uh, this is this is just for for, uh, for the presentation, not uh, not exactly. If I if I say if I save to disk, this value will be saved to disk. You can use it uh, and put it in other uh, software. Uh, okay. If I said accept, this value will be inserted into the the, the memory of this graph uh, corresponding to that event. So if I open this graph again, this value will be stored there without any uh, any problem. After that, after I finish my my study, I can just press here. Uh, I can say uh, I can make report for this event in one click. Uh, of course, it should, should be have the logo of your center of your of your university. This is the information of your uh, of your uh, event. This is what you have calculated, and and so on. This is a quick uh, a quick presentation of uh, what uh, should uh, of how to, to to estimate the S graph search uh, parameter. I think uh, yeah, it's, it's enough for everything. It's enough. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, yes, I, I, yeah, I am done. I have I have uh, several tutorials for using the graph for, for all the tools in, in YouTube. You can if you can search, you can find the, the special. Uh, uh, video for the inversion bro inversion is in the part part 13 of this graph tutorial you can search for it uh, if not you can ask me uh, about anything concerning this uh, software this source parameter or or even uh, the data and image uh, concept that i have uh, proposed and uh, thank you very much for being uh, for listening to me thank you uh. Thank you, Professor Farouk, for your brilliant talk. Uh, it has got really a very robust uh, software. Uh, I also use the software, and we could publish uh, uh, publish uh, several papers uh, with uh, Professor Farouk. I may request our session chairman, Professor uh, Jairkhan, uh, for his uh, final remarks. Over to Professor Jairkhan, sir. Thank you, Shantanu. Thank you, Professor Farooq Abdullah. You have really made a very, you know, practical demonstration of your of the program. I think many of our young participants are benefited, and you have also guided that it is available in the YouTube also, and they can also contact you. Very well presented, very well demonstrated the program. And I have just a layman question. Uh, say uh, people are more used to with the conventional program like session and how uh, this S graph program for seismic source parameters estimations how it is more advantageous than the present day conventional uh, program session program 
Do you have any comments on that? Good to hear that, yes. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, just I try to, to, to insert in this graph the, the, the fundamental uh, tools that anyone has a sudden data can use. For example, if anyone has data, uh, need to open it. So I can support all types of data. Need to plot it and see the waveform. Need to, to make filter, need to make uh, a picking, I need to pick location. This is the, this is present in any software, the free software and the, the commercial software. Okay, but uh, the, the, the part that uh, doesn't have, that doesn't uh, exist in other software like uh, like the commercial it is uh, the inversion. So no 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 software uh, I, I found uh, has this ability to to, to invert uh, some uh, unknown values of seismic uh, problem. This is not just what Thank uh, you so I much. However, Thank however, you. now there is the, the Python, uh, the Python system uh, of Spy. I think had a lot of, of things like this, but I didn't use it yet. But I think there is some, maybe better than this. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I am sure. Not, okay. not sure. Thank you so much. I think yeah. Professor Zhao is a great uh, programmer. I think he can give some comments or he, he can know. please interact. Yes. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quite nice and uh, quite useful, I think. And uh, I should uh, say congratulations to you for a nice work. Uh, I have just a few small questions. Yes. When is that? Can your code apply to a local larger earthquake? Local larger earthquake? For small yes. events. For small no, no, events. No, no, yes. Can be applied yeah, exactly. Uh, at the contrary, the local, the, the big earthquake it has a better, better result because because the smaller earthquake is uh, it has influenced by the propagation path and noise and something like this. So the spectra will not be be clear. But the bigger earthquake, if it's not clipped, uh, give a better result. But uh, if, the, for example, magnitude eight, it eight plus earthquakes. The source process could be quite complex, right? Uh, yes. And it's not a point of source. Yes, I know it is not a simple source parameter, a source, a source uh, dimension. I know. Actually, I don't have this kind of data. Uh, event 80, I don't have. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. Why not? Let's try. I don't know. I'm, I didn't try it, but uh, if you try, you can know. Uh, you know, there are, now there are a lot of bigger earthquakes. And the data available in Japan, in California. Yeah. I think you should try if your code can be applied to the larger earthquakes, greater than minus mm. six. Why not? Yes, I, 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 I and, have to try uh, this. Yes. I know, I know your code can determine the source parameter, some basic source parameter like a stress, stress shop, you know, and uh, the the radius of the source. Yes. But for larger earthquakes, you know, the source, the, the fault is quite a lot larger, right? Can be, uh, can be larger one, and 100 kilometers or a few hundred kilometers. I'm not I wonder sure. <laughs> if yes. you can, can deal with uh, such, a, such a big fault events. I, I, ha I have to try first <laughs> before, before I ask. Because the basic yes. assumption is different. Yes, yes. You know, as, as I, I, I said if, in my, if my some challenge. Correct. Yeah. If my understanding is correct, your software is based on the point source. Point source, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Right? Point source. But for the larger events, you have to yes. consider the, 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 the yes. fault, the final fault. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> of course, I know you. You. You are very smart. You can. You can develop the corresponding software. You can, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, you can develop another. Yeah, uh, some yeah. modification. Yes. Okay. My second question is: uh, Can you do? Can you apply your software to do real-time seismology? Uh, yes. This is my way now. I am. I am using uh, now S graph and tr trying to use the uh, seed link uh, to just. Uh, Retrieves the real-time data from uh, other network. This is the uh, next next progress in this. Yeah, that will be useful. That will be uh, even better. Yeah, thank you very much okay. for this. Very comment. nice. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for support.
Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Zhao. Uh, now we'll take some questions from our uh, online attendees. Uh, may I request Prasenjo Bhattacharya to take over? About the Prasenjo. Yes, sir. Uh, Namaskar, Dr. Farooq sir from Assam. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such an wonderful talk. Uh, for your assistance, now I am going to read out the questions from the participants. And the first question is, how instrument response is calculated in this software? Whether can we provide the values of poles and zero particular sensor from outside? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the network was bad. Please repeat. No, sure, sure, okay. sir. Sure, sure, sir. Uh, how instrument response is calculated in this software? Whether can we provide the values of poles and zero particular sensor from outside? Uh, yeah. No, no, this software uh, just used uh, already uh, calculated all and zero values for the for the response tissue. Uh, it is not calculated uh, the pole in zero. Just if you have uh, some uh, instrument, you know, you have to know the pole and zero values and then insert it into a graph as a file as you can use it. Okay, sir. The next question is, uh, can we use S graph for tomographic inversion? If yes, what is the maximum accuracy can we obtain from it? Uh, the S graph uh, job is just to do the, the, the picking, the, the, the picking of P and S and also it export the, the, the data as uh, the tomography format, the, the sensei uh, uh, program, the simple format. Uh, and we have to inspect every detail of the picking by using the divided diagram and travel time distance curve and all the, all the possibility to, uh, to make sure that my, uh, the accuracy of data is okay. I don't have a, a value for to tell you the accuracy. I don't have, but, uh, this guy, this depends on the, 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 the personal uh, that you use the book. Okay, sir. Uh, the next question is, uh, can you please make a comment on data compression and encryption based on bit packing, map, uh, bit map man manipulation for seismic data? Okay, uh, you're talking about the, the idea of the data uh, compression and encryption that I have presented, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, this is the, my, my, my idea is, uh, you know, everyone use data in seismology, use the data in the form of a binary file. So we have a lot of binary files in disks. Uh, we don't know uh, what is these files, what is uh, the quality, it is corrupted or it is working, what's format. Uh, so I, I, my, my idea is to convert this binary file into an, an, an image. So I can see from the image, the, the, the data as in pixels, random pixels. It is not a total, uh, has a, doesn't have any, any, any shape. This is just random pixels. But from this pixel, I can recognize if it is corrupted, if it is a, a full data or it is not uh, missing. Uh, also, I have uh, uh, some descriptive pixels color from which I can uh, just uh, classify my data uh, without uh, entering or without uh, editing the data. For, for example, I can use uh, some kind of pro program, uh, computer uh, learning, that you can see all this image and try to find the pixel that has a uh, value of, uh, for example, analyzed data. So I can classify all data from my hard disk, the analyzed data in, in, in a place and other not analyzed in other place. Also the big data, also the deep, the, the deep event, uh, the shallow event. All this can be classified just by computer, uh, just searching for the image and try to classify the data by this way without being uh, harmed to, to, to open the binary data by using the specific software, this kind of this. This is my, this is my, my way to do. Uh, and also the big data also, you can, as, as, as I told you, I can put all data in, in, a, in a paper or print it in the microfilm. So the, this, this value, this, this small image can be in a microfilm, can be also, uh, extracted later using a special soft uh, hardware. This is uh, maybe in the future you can do this. Thank you so much. If I answer the question or not. But, uh. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much for your answer. Uh, the remaining question we are going to email you. Uh, feel free, sir, uh, to uh, answer them. Thank you, sir. Over to Dr. Santonu, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Prasidja. And thank you very much, um, Professor Faru. We have come to the end of the session. Now, may I request uh, 
um, Dr. Novozuti Molia uh, for both of things. Over to Dr. Novozuti. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. A pleasing good evening to all from the land of unity in diversity. As today's event has come to an end, it is my pleasure to convey hearty thanks to everyone on behalf of Enter CSR and his family and our organizing committee of IBWGST 2021. I would further take this opportunity to thank Professor Mohammad Farooq Abdul Wahid of King Abdulaziz University, Saudi Arabia, for promptly accepting our invitation with anticipation and delivering such an educative talk on SGRAF system for seismic waveform analysis and source parameters estimation, review, and a case study. Thank you once again, sir, for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. It was such a great pleasure to have you among us as a guest speaker in today's session. Our deep sense of gratitude and thanks go to Honorable Director Dr. G. Narhari Sasti Sir of CSR Niz Zorhat for his enormous concern and moral support to successfully conduct the live session meets. Once again, a hearty rigors to you, sir. I take this opportunity to express our profuse gratitude and heartfelt thanks to our international advisor of this workshop, Professor Andrew J. Michael from USGS USA for his generous support and constant encouragement. I also convey my deepest sense of gratitude to our session's advisor, Professor Daping Zhao, an eminent seismologist from Tohoku University, Japan, for sparing his valuable time and gracing us today with his honorable presence and providing continuous support throughout the workshop. I would also like to thank the session's chairperson, Professor J.R. Kyle, former Deputy Director General of Geological Survey of India, and session's co-chairperson, Dr. Soru Borwa, Chief Scientist of CSIR NIST, for their diligent commitment towards the event and providing needful guidance. Once again, I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Santonu Borwa, convener of this workshop, for his vigorous devotion for this international live session meets. We once again sincerely thank him a lot for bestowing his opportunity to unite laureates from different regions of the world under a single online podium. I owe my deepest thanks to the members of technical committee and organizing committee for their support, dedication, teamwork, and persistent effort. Last but foremost, I express my deep sense of appreciation to all the attendees for their active involvement and cooperation in today's event, without which this event would not have been a success. Further, I solicit your continued support during the workshop and look forward to see you all for the next session which will go live at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Our keynote speaker for tomorrow's session is Dr. Seema Ghos from NIT Agartala, India, with her lecture on recent seismicity and probability assessment of earthquake occurrence in Northeast and Himalayan region. With hearty rigors, I conclude this session. Once again, thank you all for your precious presence and contribution for IBWGS 2021. Namaskar, Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank good you, work. Thank you, thank you, sir.